And welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Real, LKT's official podcast. <laughs> I don't know why people laugh. I mean, I'm just stating the facts. It's, it's LKT's official the podcast. official podcast. Yep. It just sounds vindictive. It's like all those other podcasts that are happening with Shane Any. All those. They don't count. Those don't count. They don't count. Where? All those fake ass podcasts. Fake <laughs> ass podcasts coming at you next. Get Son. you a real one. <laughs> yeah. Get you a real one. Um, so, yeah. Oh my we, god. The real one. All right, let's we, get started. We established that we <laughs> understood that. Off? <laughs> Yo. Come on, really? 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 <laughs> real puns. Is this oh what's going to happen tonight? You guys okay. are all so hot right now. Okay. So, uh, for this episode, we are diving into some Studio Ghibli goodness. We and we have some very... Some studio Can I tell goodness. you guys a funny story first that has nothing to do with this, but I feel like I want to get it off my chest. What if I say get it off the chest? Take, go ahead. Take your go shirt ahead. off. All right. So, I was driving to Lenzo's place last night. Oh, no. And I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with, like, the Hamden area, but there's that uh, Cold Spring Lane intersection with uh, Roland Avenue. Yeah. Where it's, like, that, that incline yeah, yeah. To, that leads up to the intersection. So, I was going to turn left there. Mm-hmm. And I was in the left turn lane. Then, all of a sudden, like, five squad cars pull up. <laughs> and, like, a few of them dart out into the intersection and block all entrances. What? And then like a uh, like a black state trooper car comes up next to me and like gives some weird hand signals, and I'm like, huh? So, <laughs> so he he pull, he pulls out like diagonally in front of my car, like ten feet in front of me, and does more of that hand signal shit. And I'm like, is he like waving me on or something? Like what's going on here? I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck did I do? <laughs> so I I pull out and I I. Uh, I like almost get next to his car and I pull my window down and I'm like, can I, can I go? And he just screams at me, get the fuck out of the way. And I'm like, what do you mean get out of the way? <laughs> so I, I keep going. I make the left turn and I pull over and I look in my, my uh, rear view mirror. Cause I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Are they about to like squat up on me again? Again. And then like an 18 wheeler truck just like zooms through the intersection and it was carrying a missile. <gasps> Yo. You're what? Uh, I, was oh like, <laughs> I was like, hold up. <laughs> he could have just told me there was a missile. Behind him. <laughs> That's all you needed oh to say. God. There's a missile coming through. I think he was too shook. <laughs> like all, all he needed to do was be like, there's a missile coming. But then again, if he would have said that to me after like all those squad cars pulled up, I would have been like, where? <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to die? Is this like... Is this the airstrike? What's going on? What I the mean, shit? I, I was personally shook, but uh, now that that's out of the way, and I, I got it out of my chest. <laughs> Not off your chest, but out of. Like, it was in my chest. Or alien style. Thank you for sharing yeah. that with us. Yes, this is thank me. you so much. Are we Missile gonna be witness like, anonymous. <laughs> we're going to be like tracked now because of that. Is that like some like top secret? Oh, the drone. Us? Oh my the god. Drone. I just There's saw a drone, drone outside. Getting out of my car. No, no. So I got out of my car and I heard this buzzing noise and I looked up and there was. The, the drone in the air. So of course I stopped and I took a Snapchat of it, like, haha, look right, at this like what everyone would in do in the air. But then it started like following me as I was walking to Namdi's, and like it stopped eventually. But like I was, I could have peed myself. Yeah, man, I love my neighbor Totoro. Shook it <laughs> as fuck. Yeah, yeah so of my neighbor Totoro. <laughs> so anyway, Studio Ghibli guys, yeah, right? Studio Ghibli. Uh, we're getting into some Studio Ghibli goodness. Uh, we have some special guests. Uh, joining us, uh, if you want to introduce yourselves, we'll just start from here. So yeah, uh, my little Ellie Brown is on the podcast. <laughs> okay, hi, I'm Ellie Brown. <laughs> Scream into the microphone I, I, a little bit more, Namdi. <laughs> What's that? Oh god. Um, yeah, well, introduce yourself. Don't hurt this tiny. I'm a uh, Gabe Gage. Nice. Oh, Do you ever feel like your name sounds like a porn star name? I think about that almost every day. Uh, white kid. White kid. My name head. is Seth Herzog, and it is, I've never thought about it sounding like a porn star name. I've thought about a lot of things about like porn star names, but not not my name being one of them. Mm. Mm. So, so, are you going to actually formally introduce yourself, or are you just going to let Namdi do it? Your... Okay. Hi, I'm Ellie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <perfect>. Hey. <laughs> Sweet. Right. So, yeah, uh, I gathered uh, some good friends of mine today to talk about all things Studio Ghibli. Um, obviously- You, you sound know, like a pastor. 
So <laughs> we are today we are, we are talking today. about the good word, the good gospel of one Miyazaki. Uh, if everybody would just open their Bibles to Miyazaki three sixteen. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Oh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> and Totoro said unto them. It's like, no, I'm Does no, he I'm actually not. even say anything in that film? No, he just like smiles. <laughs> can I? Oh! Yes. Can I confess something really to you guys? Good luck. Again? All right, you gotta, you gotta go, go for it. Oh, you yeah, go I know. Cat pass for good luck. Totoro, my neighbor Totoro is the only Studio Ghibli film that I've seen. Why are you, why are you here? Why are you? Well, I mean, because I'm the you. engineer of this well, podcast. He's the engineer <laughs> That's why I'm here. But um, look, if Kelly were here, which she's not, God bless, rest in peace, Kelly. R. I. I she is yeah, not really dead. Miss you. I just, was, just fatal car She's accident. not dead. She is she's, not dead. She's not okay. dead. Okay, I was drunk, gonna, busy. I was gonna <laughs> give <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> I was gonna give Kelly a microphone, and I was just gonna sit in the corner, and just pretend to be doing something. Isn't that what audio people do on set anyway? Yes. Yeah. Most of the time. Like, you're not wrong, Seth. I know you're trying to dog me, but you're not wrong. <laughs> I also feel Try like we should uh, get out of the way and thank Corey for uh, doing a wonderful presentation and getting us mics to use oh. for this uh, wonderful and, podcast. And not just for this wonderful Shit. podcast, yeah, for like, plenty of other things. Yes. Well, yeah, Gave you fucking that. suck up. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I'm just trying to get laid. He's trying to get laid. He's trying to get laid tonight. Um, I so that. Sorry, Masha. I guess to start things off, um, we're just going to go around the room. Uh, what was your first introduction to Studio Ghibli? Like, what was the first movie? What were your feelings? <laughs> Where were you when you saw your first Ghibli film? Who, who's answering first? I guess yeah, you said around the room, like. <laughs> um, I guess I can start. Um, but so, then, do we go clockwise or counterclockwise? It doesn't matter. You know the logistics. I, I gotta guess. know, dude. Is it? Oh, I'll I, go. The, I'll, I'll make it easier for you. We'll just go this way. Wait, so you no, because I actually have an answer for this one. Okay, City I'll, just, I'll go after. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, um, the first time I was introduced to uh, Studio Ghibli was, I don't, uh, if there's anybody out there who used to watch Toonami, um, they did this thing on Toonami called The Month of Miyazaki. Um, it started in March and it went into mid-April. So they showed four films. Uh, those four films were uh, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, uh, Spirited Away, um, Castle in the Sky, and Princess Mononoke. And... That was my introduction to that whole realm of animation. And I remember watching it as a kid. I, I watched uh, Spirited Away uh, first. And I remember being, I remember being amazed because I had never, cause I mean, I watched a lot of anime as a kid growing Weep. up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you're on this podcast talking about Studio Ghibli. Yeah, your point, fucking weeb. All right, so anyway. <laughs> Um, I remember watching a lot of anime as a kid and um, I was just blown away by how sophisticated everything was like it seemed like it seemed like a Disney movie which it kind of is like it's it's anime Disney essentially Studio Ghibli um, but a lot better yeah yeah um, I didn't understand the nuances yet though uh, as a child it wasn't until I rewatched some of those films later in life where I was like, yo, this guy Miyazaki really is one of the greats. So that was my first uh, introduction to Studio Ghibli. Uh, do you want to go? Oh, um, hmm. I don't remember what age I was. It was like... Seven. Probably. <laughs> yeah, let's just go with that one. <laughs> just go with that Cool, one. we'll go with seven. Um, but I remember my I saw it Spirited Away on Toonami. I don't think it was during that month of... Miyazaki no, it probably was. What year was that? Was that like recently or? That was a long what time ago. What year did ago. it come out? Does anyone know? 2001. Uh, 2001. 2001. Yep. It was like way after that then. Um, but I remember because I was young and I actually hated it when I first saw it because I was like, this movie is fucking sad. I don't want to watch sad shit. Granted, I was like, what's between seven and 10 years old. So like it, it didn't really click to me like, like the emotional connection I would have to that movie. I think I saw it like sometime during high school again and I was like oh this is actually great and then I saw more movies I saw uh, My Neighbor Totoro and then I saw uh, yeah, what's the one, one. Yep. Kiki's Delivery Service yes that one. that one yeah and then um, all the way up to like I remember I remember Princess Mononoke specifically because I was the fucking best well yes yeah. but also because like I was um, I'm also a weeb 
fun fact. Weep. Um, and I took Japanese for three years in my high school. Oh my God. And <laughs> you're like a mega um, weeb. Sort of yes, like a weeb yes. in the house. Um, and all you can say is baka. Anyways, um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the very last year I took Japanese. I was in Japanese three and um last day my teacher was like oh we're gonna watch a studio ghibli film and everyone was super excited and it was great and she put on princess mononoke and then she goes no subtitles <laughs> and when i first watched that movie i was like this movie is gorgeous i love it but i don't know what the fuck is going on <laughs> and so that was my introduction to that film and then i remember when i first got an lkt i joined gilligan and um i was in a line Oh, I forgot to do that. <clears throat> you guys oh. are too big. I wish you Delicate. guys would just split up. Low key, I'm gonna have like a really unpopular opinion, but also like it might be kind of fun. I want Matt DeHoff to not take a little, so Baruti dies, and I want Gilligan to split in half and become new Baruti. I don't think that's. I was happen. actually joking that just like Tyler's line should just become the new Baruti and just see what happens. Yeah, why not? I'm against well, that. Well, it dies with me. That's what happens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like that line. I want to keep you guys around. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually love everybody in that line. But anyways, I saw that movie in Japanese was, and I was confused until like sometime last semester. I finally watched it in English. So now I love it, and I love Ghibli and everything. So nice. Gosh, now that was cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I think that. The first time I ever experienced any Studio Ghibli was um, my dad took me to see Spirited Away in the movie theaters when it first came out. And I remember actually like protesting going to it because like he had made me watch a trailer and I just thought it was the weirdest thing I'd seen in my life. Like I was not a weeb child. My not dad. Weeb. Not weeb. <laughs> <laughs> a certified non weeb. Oh my weeb. God. Outsider here. <laughs> no, but like I completely fell in love with it and I was still too little to really understand like how complex it all was. But um, after that, he introduced me to The Cat Returns, actually, which is like a very unpopular yeah. one. And I don't know Good why, one. because it's one is of my favorite. Is that the one with like definitely. the cat bus or whatever? No, it no. Is. Cat yes. bus is uh, oh, my God. God. Yes, no. Cat Returns is the one that's not <laughs> the two founders. No, The Cat Returns the cat is literally like a cat that walks on two The legs. Cat Returns oh. is kind of a sequel. I haven't seen all of them. So what? like that's one of them it's I haven't seen. It's a sequel to a romance, a romantic movie that they made that was completely like just, just a romance. And then there was a character in it that a statue that they created into another character that oh. they use for the character turns. Oh. Just some side facts. Interesting. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I saw that and it was always just like a me and my dad thing. Um, that was like what we bonded over a lot of the time. So That's it's cute. like pleasant memories for that and also they're just great. So I've stuck with it. And then like when I was older, he showed me Castle in the Sky and Mononoke and everything. So it's I got a soft spot for it. Mm. Yeah, he's like excited that I'm here right now talking about it too. So, oh. yeah. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. El Ellie's hey, dad. Ellie's dad. Hi, hi to my dad too. Uh, if he's I'm Mr. Oh my Brown. God! Also, hi, Seth's dad. Hello, uh, Dave Grohl. If you're watching, Dave <laughs> Grohl. <laughs> That's my real dad. Sorry, hey, dad. Uh, Gosnell Senior. This is Gosnell <laughs> Junior. Uh, you should probably listen to this at some point because, like, you know, I'm doing things. I think it's so funny when parents name their kids after themselves. I don't know. <laughs> Like, have you seen that one, like, video that's gotten viral recently, and it's the family feud thing? Mm. I don't know. No, nope. Aren't they all, like, named John or something? No, it's like... Is it just oh, Steve Harvey's Oh my god, no, mustache? it's Obu. The guy's name is Obu, and their last name is Obu. And so, he, like, Steve... Wait, what is it? Steve Harvey? Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey found Obu Obu's dad in the audience, and was like, what's his middle name? And it was also... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That just really geeks me out. For Obu, a long time. This has been an episode of Talking About Dads. Talking About Dads. <laughs> sorry, Go back sorry, to the real. I'm sorry. Go back to the real. Uh, shout out to Greg. Um, <laughs> I don't have any special affinity towards any anime at all. Actually, weeb. I, Get wait, shit. Greg, <laughs> <laughs> you're premature weeb. <laughs> Uh, maybe, maybe in the future I'll become like a full blown weeb. Yeah, but Cor Corey, you just need to find hentai. Then I know, I know you. Wait, you'll, you'll honestly, be in it. Seth, I have never had someone talk more about hentai than you, <laughs> dude. It's like I've, I don't even I've watch hentai. Talking, I just, I like just you think it's so interesting. Talk about it. I watch so much hentai. <laughs> Recently, also, I've just been starting to like to talk about hentai so much. It's ridiculous. The one person in this room with a tattoo of the rising sun. Is not a weeb. Just look, this has been brought up multiple times, and I want to clear the air that I got it because I am 
loyal to the Imperial Japanese Navy. Are we all? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, just like everybody else. <laughs> Never surrender. I actually got it because it's a pretty sweet pattern, but I didn't realize that old people would hate me afterwards. But no regrets because they're going to die. You know, old people hate me for other reasons. So anyway, uh, I don't have any special affinity to <laughs> towards <laughs> anime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Sorry. got a really fucking powerful laugh. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. But, so no special... No, I don't care about anime at all, really, which further begs the question why I'm even here. I'm telling you, just start watching hentai. But no. Change, it'll change your Seth, life. Seth, stop. My I, dad is listening. My dad is too, maybe. I don't know. Grohl. Your point is... My and also so is Dave Grohl. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I bet Dave Grohl watches hentai. Dude. Samuel Jackson watches hentai. He said that in an interview. How do you the know day. this? He said it in an interview. So what were you saying, Corey? Anyway, <laughs> welcome back to the hentai podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I saw my neighbor Totoro in a theater when it got like re-released for maybe some like anniversary or some shit, like a uh, year or two ago. Probably like a year and a half ago. And apparently, you're not supposed to cry at My Neighbor Totoro because it's not a sad film. <laughs> no, it's a sad film. It is a sad no, film. Really I sad. sobbed a little bit. I wasn't like full blown, like you drowning the theater with my bit. tears. <laughs> but like, I could have sworn that that girl's mom was going to die. They alluded to it the whole movie. She was in the hospital the whole fucking movie. And then like the, she, the little girl went out to go find her and she got lost and she she started crying. Oh, and I can't handle oh, I can't man. handle little Japanese children, uh, little 2D <laughs> Japanese children crying. Oh, yeah, first of, of all, fireflies. Oh, and then we'll get there. and then at the end, they just yanked my fucking chain and she didn't die. I was like, well, well, well she better die because <laughs> like Wait a these tears don't come. For, so, no for no reason. For no reason. Studio did you watch Ghibli. The Japanese version with English subtitles, or did you watch the Disney uh, dub of it, or did you watch the Fox dub of it? I watched the Japanese version with English subtitles. Okay, cool. That's good fair. choice. That's fair. Good choice. Not the right choice, but fair. It's a good choice. Excuse me. What is the right choice? The Fox dub. The what? Just watch all of them. Like it's a movie. Yeah, actually, just watch Japanese times, with like, no uh, subtitles. Um, what version? I'm not I'm Japanese not that level no of weeb that I can understand that gossip. No. I actually like the German dub of it with uh, Japanese subtitles and then run that through Google Translate and have that speak to me in English. But like that's backwards. something you would do though. So like I feel like you're joking but at the same time like are you? I don't know. I don't even know anymore. That's no I've, idea. I've lost count of what's a joke and what's not anymore. I've lost count of most things. But I guess my turn? Yeah, you're Oh yeah, I, I've, only, I've only seen my neighbor Totoro and I cried. That's <laughs> that's, my, hey, Dan, that's my connection. Um, yeah, I uh, I was raised on mm -hmm. uh, Studio Ghibli. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I was raised on Studio Ghibli. Like my parents uh, showed me some cool movies from the time I was really little. So like I don't remember the first time I watched it, but I remember watching like especially. Uh, my neighbor Totoro and uh, Kiki's That was a wee service. way to pronounce it, Seth. <laughs> that was a little. What? I mean, that's the what? correct how way. How did I pronounce it? it? The correct Totoro. way. That's how you so pronounce it. That's the how they pronounce way. it. That's Fucking even in the English weeb. version. That's how they pronounce it. That's anyway. just Japanese language. But, but yeah, yeah, like I, I was watching them since the time I was little. Uh, at some point, I watched the other ones. I don't remember how, but like I've been watching them since I was little. I didn't realize that they were like the same director. I didn't realize it was you know something different. I just. I really like those movies. My parents really like those movies. I don't even think I realized that Kiki's Delivery Service was like Japanese because it looks like it takes place in a European town. So I was like, oh, cool. Like, they're not related at all. And then one day I found out and it just blew my mind. Also, I would just like to backtrack for a second. This is not Studio Ghibli related. This is hentai related. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> let's get into it. No, the no, only I'm, time, I'm okay with No, this. the only this time I've cool. ever watched hentai um, was by accident, actually. I was, I was rewatching the whole Teen Titans Bullshit. series. And no, then I don't believe Teen that Titans. Uh, no, like, teen, so Teen Titans That's Trouble in a, Tokyo. Yes. Yeah, it has this hentai version, right? And so I tried watching the movie online because, like, I watched it on some website and the website didn't have the movie. So I tried finding something else. And, and you had to, like, download a bunch of them. But the first one that was streamable, I watched it. And it was a Teen Titans hentai, but it starts the same way. And, like, the animation is, like, really good. So, like, they fight the giant goo monster in the beginning. And then suddenly this tentacle just starts, like, doing things to oh Starfire. God. And I was really little at the time. And I'm like, I know this isn't right, but I don't know what's happening. So I turn it off and I kind of, like, forget about it. Like, push it out of my mind. Then years later, I'm, I'm in, like, sitting in a class in my senior year of high school. And I hear someone else mention this. I'm like, wait, hold on. So I talk to them. And two of my other friends had this exact same experience. They tried watching the movie and they accidentally watched the hentai version. But both of my friends were at least two years younger than me. So they didn't realize, like, that they were supposed to turn it off. 
So there were more scenes in that that I had no idea. So we sat in in the room in my senior year of high school and just watched hentai together. Oh my uh, God. And it got brutal. It was disturbing. It uh, got brutal. It got brutal. Like there's a scene with like Cyborg and Jinx and there was like That's a bones good breaking. It's... It's a lot. It's disturbing, and that what was my podcast about again. That was my experience with hentai. Look, time. I'm just saying, like, if, you know, if you're wondering why I talk so much about hentai, it's because it's just like it's it's so ingrained in my mind at this point, just as like I'm so sorry, a, I'm a so thing, and it's yeah. Anyway. The only time I ever see hentai is when I'm scrolling through like r slash dank memes on reddit or yeah. something oh, no. and there's just like random hentai no i see i see like so gifts like, on like, tumblr all the time and i like avoid them and like i've seen I quit them but tumblr like, because i was I, tired oh of I, I see them on the internet all the time and i, I try my best to avoid them <laughs> <laughs> dude i'm telling you it's gonna change your life i don't know if it's gonna be for better or worse Look, but it'll change i'm your already life. plenty experienced with hentai well then why are you saying you don't watch anime what the fuck are you talking about you're just fucking lying to everyone no i i do that real life shit that real life shit that- hentai is not really. Yeah, speaking of, I ate an octopus <laughs> for the first time a few weeks ago. Did it eat you back? I love no. Old boy. No, but actually, Ooh, though, it was like, dead and it tasted like good. crabs. Yeah, that actual old boy was actually a vegetarian. What do you mean, ew? I know. I don't like it. So traumatizing. Crabs are great. What is wrong with you? Oh, are you okay? Oh, God. Yeah. You don't like I'm crabs? Fine. What is I wrong with like you? Crabs. That's like saying like you don't like water. Like, what's wrong with I don't with like you? crabs. Actually, that's a lot. I've never had crabs. I don't know if I like them. No, it just really fix that. We can't fix that. I mean, eating crabs extra. You can't. Cause so much work for like so little meat. It just does like it's... anyone in this room have crabs? No. That's you mean no, like no, you mean on enough. deck or what? I think you mean like below deck. Actually, you think, like, you know exactly <laughs> what you think it means coming from Gabe. So anyway, we're back gonna, to Ghibli. We're, we're gonna we're gonna jump back into my story. Um, so I grew up. My grandfather, he um was living in Japan in the 1950s and 60s when his dad was in the Navy. And so um, he showed me a bunch of... uh, Hentai. A bunch of uh, hentai-esque movies by uh, Hayao Miyazaki in the 90s. No, no, he doesn't make hentai. Just everyone else in Japan. And um, so I grew up watching Studio Ghibli movies like My Neighbor Totoro and Kiki's Delivery Service and Castle in the Sky up until I was like five. And... Then in 2001, I went and saw Spirit Away when it came out in theaters, and that horrified me and was also beautiful. Um, I also cried at My Neighbor Totoro growing up. That one was a really Good. sad one. You Maze don't have crying. feelings if you didn't cry. At he was also a child. In me. Yeah. I still cry about that movie. Stop. I sob at cartoons. You, like, I cry over on Adventure on Time like three times. I just sob try- at. I was like, just trying to attack Corey. Oh my god. That's all I was trying to do. Never mind. Just Gus, let's make us muted now. Never Gus, mind. no. Do you need to let out a cry? Do we need to? Do we need to alter the course of this podcast? No. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, you know so I, I, cry, a- I cry plenty. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> plenty of times. I don't do. Corey that. watches hentai and cries. Wait, Listen, wait, do you, you don't have to like attack Ponyo? my personal life. What? Do you guys like we Ponyo? actually saw I like Ponyo. Ponyo. We were watching it the other night. Ponyo's Just fantastic. the other night, yeah. I don't know. What that I feel is. like that's my least favorite. Oh, it's, yeah, not, it's, it's not my favorite, oh, but it's like it. it's good. It, it, oh, it's solid. Like it's a solid mm-hmm. film. I mean, granted, you know, everybody was talking over it, so I didn't exactly know what was going on. But that was your first time watching it. That was my first time watching. Oh, I mean. I think it's interesting. The the art style is really pretty. Like yeah, it's, 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 it's very very colorful. Uh, later in his life, you know, Miyazaki was making like kids movies, not necessarily family movies. Yeah. Like you can watch Kiki's Delivery Service as an adult, and there's still a bunch of stuff to find. I feel like I watched Ponyo once. I'm like, all right, I, I saw everything there was to see. I saw. mean, that's kind yeah, of an issue. It's not see. really like S- saw everything there's as to see. complex as his other ones, which is what yeah. draws me in a lot of the time. Yeah, I, I mean, it, you know, you watch Kiki's Delivery Service, and there's always something new to find. You watch mm-hmm. uh, My Neighbor Telltale, Throw, Spirited Away. Like, there's something new every time you watch those. Yeah. Ponyo, I'm just like, all right, oh, cool. Like, there's this random fish in the background. Like, that's kind of it. There's no, yeah. like, material to digest. I think digest. Nausicaa is the one that I find the most in every time. Well, Nausicaa, Nausicaa is fantastic. Nausicaa, Nausicaa is also super interesting because yeah. it's only the beginning of the story. Like, that's mm-hmm. the only one that they made based off of a manga, and that manga is seven volumes, and that only covers the first two. Yeah, it definitely Have you spawned read it? from yeah. way more. It's really more. good. Really? Yeah. Actually, I kind of want to read it now. Yeah, I mean, I have it on my shelf if you want to. Oh, wait, that's, not, that's not an open invitation to everyone listening. Hey, when you're done, that's can open I get it? Because I was supposed <laughs> to watch that earlier. No, wait, Justin I'm, like, podcast, I'm like back at my dad's this week, so can I like grab it? Yeah, no, I got you. Oh my god. It's awesome. I also own all the Ghibli movies on DVD if anyone wants to borrow this. Gimme. Yeah, so um, I guess we can like dive into the conversation and sort of like thirty um, minutes into the episode, <laughs> and sort of uh, uh, twenty four um, minutes thirty seven seconds, and sort of um, <laughs> fuck you, Corey. Shade was thrown, <laughs> and sort of uh, unpack uh, some of these some of the bigger films. I guess uh, I guess we could start with Nausicaa. Um, okay. Yeah, it's a good place to start. Yeah, Nausicaa. It's always a good place. 
Nausicaa I haven't is a, seen that one. <laughs> Wait, I have, not, a, I have not a question. We're not going to spoil it for you. No, it's no okay. we're going to spoil it. I'm going to talk in grave I'm detail about it. No, about I'm, I'm fine with that. I was just sad because like, I was supposed to watch that. Dude, like, how right sad is it when she dies at the end? I came. Oh, man, that was yeah, heart-wrenching. Yeah. Okay. Then when Goku comes back and like saves her life. It's oh, so spirit yeah. bomb. I actually have a legit Studio Ghibli question. What's up? What like last year, Studio Ghibli's like main colorist lady, I think it was a lady, died. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I'm sure she, she taught some people. No, she was she was uh, one of the founding members. She wasn't just a color; she was also like a storyboard artist and was involved with like the foundation of the company. She's been working there for a long time. It was really upsetting. They actually lost two members last year. Yeah. Really? Yeah, two, the, two of the founding members. But like, it's it's a bigger studio now, and now they're outsourcing a lot of stuff. Like, the Red Turtle was a bunch of other animators, so like, they're mm-hmm. still going. They still have the Ghibli Museum. Like, there's a lot of people there. Like, it was sad, but like, it's not. Wait, there's a Ghibli Museum? Yeah, in Japan. There's, actually, a, there's also a short a there that you can't watch anywhere else. It's called May and the Kitten Bus. It's, it's so about May, like the youngest daughter of her, My Neighbor Totoro, oh, and the Kitten Bus, who's the cat oh bus's oh kid. Oh my god. I'm I like so bad. There are tears in my eyeballs right now. That is so cute. <laughs> Miyazaki met his wife. She was a, uh, she, at the company that they worked for before Studio Ghibli, before he founded that. She, that's where he met his wife, who was a colorist and animator there. The wait, the studio that did Cagliostro, the studio that did Nausicaa? I believe it was Topcraft. Gotcha. Okay. You know what? Some about um. Uh, you mentioned some, uh, something about Cagli. How do you Cassie pronounce Cagliostro. it? Cagliostro or Cagliostro? Cagliostro. 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 Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Wrong one. Wrong one. <laughs> um. Yeah. So it, it's funny because I actually heard about Lupin the Third when I was a kid. Yeah. And I did not know that uh, Miyazaki and uh, Taka. Takahata. Uh, Takahata. 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 Yeah. Like they were involved with that anime. Um, so when not I s- all the TV show, just that movie. Just, just that movie. movie? Yeah, just that movie. Okay, yeah. So that's one that I really need to watch because I, I was I, I always had like a an interest in Lupin the Third. I remember seeing it on Adult Swim, mm. um, but I never really sat down and like absorbed it. It's I, good. It's like it's like Sherlock Holmes in a way. Kind of, yeah. I have I a figured. story. Uh, the first time I tried to watch that movie, I went. I, my grandfather told me where it was in his collection of movies. I went downstairs, grabbed the case, put it in the record player or in the uh, DVD player at the time. <laughs> in the record, and, record player. And <laughs> put it in the record player, put it on vinyl. And then um, when It'll I pressed play, it, it started a hentai esque movie. What the or fuck, like a guys? It's <laughs> to be a common thing. thing. What, what is, is the deal here? Well, it, okay, it, it's not like crazy. It was just naked ladies, and I got that was my first uh, experience uh, watching boobs on a movie. Really? Yeah. Anime uh, boobs. First uh, boobs. Thanks, Grandpa. What so was anyway, anime boobs? First boobs. movie first boobs. boobs. First movie boobs. First movie boobs. This is real quick. Oh my god. First movie so boobs? back to Nausicaa. <laughs> Nausicaa, the Valley of the Wind. How am I so supposed I to really know when my first movie boobs yeah, was? I don't, That's I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. Was it right? Sin City? <laughs> was it Sin City? <laughs> Someone knew. I, I think I think it was. First movie. I can't even I think it was. I think it was Sin City. I don't know what my first Once again, like my parents were very like lenient with what I watched. Like we would go they talk they brought my brother to go see Hair, which is a movie all about a bunch of nudists in the seventies, and they're just like, Yeah, like it's all right, like don't worry about it, it's fine. Uh So like I don't remember what my first movie boobs were. The official OKT podcast. The official, <laughs> movie the official OKT oh, podcast. Well, talking about movie boobs. I just I really we should plug this. I'm all for uh gender equality. So first movie dick, anyone? First, first movie, movie dick. Oh, uh, like full on dick. Ooh, I, like I actually know this. It's Brokeback yeah, Mountain. It's broke sad back. that I know this one. Probably Brokeback Mountain. Um, I don't remember the exact movie, but I remember like watching, like I walked in like halfway through my parents were watching some movie and it was just like this hey, guy yeah. and someone was taking care of him and it was like some scene where like they were pulling him out of the bathroom, just like silhouetted. I'm like, that was the first time that I ever saw a movie. I'm like, oh, that's just like full dick right there. <laughs> so mom. It's yes. kind of sad that I can pinpoint the exact time Does, I saw a Dick the first time. What like, year I've did Watchmen either. come out? I don't oh. think I've seen movie Dick either. Yeah. Yeah. And I you, think like, it was Bronson. It? It's Bronson. so rare. Okay. It's I such a rare sight. Mine was late in life. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So back to Nausicaa, The Valley of the Wind. No movie Dick in that one. Yeah. No movie Dick in that one. Yeah. So no that's, movie boobs oh, either. Rats. So that that film is really interesting because. Um, I watched it and uh, me, like Seth, we were talking about this in the car um, on the way to Gabe's. It's it's like a common theme in 2017 in mm. certain uh, pieces of pop culture where it's, you know, a beautiful post-apocalyptic wasteland yeah. with like um, technological elements and like nature elements and like mm. f- fantastical elements. Mm-hmm. So um, Nausicaa reminded me of things like, you know, Breath of the Wild, which just came so out. Good. So uh, good. Horizon Zero Dawn. I haven't played it. As also well. looks good. Um, so when watching that film, first and foremost, 
a common thread in a lot of Miyazaki films is flight. Yeah. Like well, if like flying. His dad oh my or his God. grandpa was an aviator? His, his yeah. Dad. His dad. Yo, I you did. You I just, didn't realize that every like almost like every single every one. Yeah. One. Oh yeah. my god. Wait, Sometimes that's really what's, funny. what's flight, that? Like uh, planes, especially like aircraft. Delivery service has yeah. like different aircraft. Yeah. Like, Castle in the sky. Castle everything. in the sky, like floating. The wind rises. The wind rises, the wind rises all rises. Rises. <laughs> What's the one with the pig? Poco Rosso. I actually have not seen that. One. That's the only one I have not seen. Yeah. That's the. That was the. Isn't the animation style like a lot different? What, what was that? Isn't the animation style just like for Poker Rosa? Not really. Different? No, like no. Poker Rosa is pretty much the same. Just about the same as oh. everyone. It's, it's pretty much because it's never really encountered it. It takes place in like World War II Italy, so yeah. like a lot of it is different. Uh, the music's gorgeous. Joe Hisaishi still does the music, but like it's a, it's an entirely different experience. But it's still like you can tell. Mm -hmm. It's just weird because the main character is like a pig, yeah. and it's yeah. a different type of pig than you see in Spirited Away. Like it's a pig still. I, I actually remember watching um not going back to Nasca for a second um <laughs> I actually put this on my Snapchat story because uh it there it was when uh Prince uh Princess Kush I'm gonna just call her Princess Kush excuse <laughs> excuse me uh, her How's full name is uh, her full name is Kush Kushiana yeah the Princess the one Kushiana in the, in the gold armor. in the gold armor the villain of Kushiyama? that movie uh Princess Kush. Is it Kushiyama? Kushiyama? I'm just gonna call her Princess Kush for I'm short. I'm pretty sure it's <laughs> Kushiyama, just cause like, never mind. I'm not gonna get into Princess that. Princess That's fairly dank. But yeah, not dank enough. Dank esque. Anyways. So um, they were in the forest. They were like in the heart of the forest, and um, uh, Nasika and like a couple. Um, Kushana. Kushana. There you go. Princess Kushana uh, was with Nasika in the forest, and. Um, uh, Kushana pulls out her, her revolver because they were about to escape or whatever and then it's like where do you think you're going um, I, I think yeah she was startled because she heard a noise in the forest and then like <laughs> Nausicaa turns around and it's like what are you so excitable about you're acting like a scared little fox girl and then I remember just like getting like that clip on my on my snap story and adding like a flame emoji and a hand emoji, like Nasika's a Nasika's a savage. Boom, roasted. But um, I really I really enjoy the fact uh, that's honestly uh, my favorite used to be Mononoke, but after watching that film again, I definitely have to say Nasika is probably my favorite because that was the start of another one of Miyazaki's traits of having strong female characters, whether they be protagonists ah, or antagonists. Yeah, I mean, that was, you know, it wasn't just the start, like, that was the start of everything. That was before Ghibli. Yeah. You know, he Feminism directed Lupin the Third, and then in 84, I think, they did Nausicaa, and then in 85, they made Ghibli, like, that's Official. everything that he always wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah, um, and I, ju I just enjoy Nausicaa as a character, really. Um, I remember talking with uh, Marcus, who um, those who are listening on our last episode, he was on Black Media. Um, Represent Marcus Ellison. Marcus Ellison. I don't think you're ready for spaghetti. <laughs> Shout out to Marcus Ellison. <laughs> um, but yeah, we were talking about uh, Star Wars: The Force Awakens, and um, he brought up a, a very startling point <laughs> when I thought about it. Ray and Nausicaa are very similar yeah. in character. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's. Ooh. They're they're I very like similar. About that. Like just from the the aesthetic of like how like Nausicaa has her like her gun, and like Ray has her staff, and like they carry it the same way, mm -hmm. and how you know throughout the film, you know you could make the argument. Personally, I think it's a dumb argument, mm -hmm. but like you could make the argument that you know they're too perfect of protagonists. Like they could be mm -hmm. considered quote unquote Mary Sue's. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just I I when I saw that uh, comparison, and then like to the point where like I, I saw on Facebook, it was like a poster done in the style of like one of the posters for Nausicaa, mm. but it was Ray and BB-8, and it said Scavenger on the top, <laughs> and I was like, Yep, Ooh. that's accurate. Scavengers of the Valley of Jakku. The only time yeah. that uh, I'm offended that you didn't like tag me in that. Sorry. I'll but, send it to you. I'll send you the picture. <laughs> the only time that Nasca really has like a dark side is when um the people kill her father and she like wipes yeah. out a room of people. Well, yeah. I mean, and it's read, if you read incredible. the manga, there's there's more to it. Like, well, yeah, I'm just yeah, more to the story. keeping it to the movie. It's yeah, just yeah, it's yeah. so like it's such a weird moment because you'd never see that side of her again. Mm -hmm. But it's just like it's just so intense and how passionate she is, which is but even a part then of her like that that's not necessarily like a bad trait. Like, not she's at all. Yeah, not at all. What she cares about, which mm -hmm. is. 
kind of like inspiring, it just felt like, actually. like you know like a Wolverine like rage moment. Yeah. Like it was so well. It's also like I when it. Ashitaka Crazy. like takes someone's head off in in uh, Princess Mononoke. Like Cuts there's always that. Off, yeah. yeah, there's always that rage like within these characters. I mean, Chihiro in Spirit Away has it yeah, too. Like definitely. in a di- I guess Chihiro doesn't. Sen has more of that. Like Chihiro's just kind of like whiny, but like Sen is a little bit. <laughs> That's why I hated it when I first watched it. I, I love how <laughs> you hate her at first. You're like, man, just stop whining yeah. about it. Right. But you know, but, she has to be whiny. Like that has exactly. to be what her character yeah. is. Exactly, because mm-hmm. you know she doesn't develop and become a strong warrior. She becomes a hard worker and understands I mean, how the yeah, world the works. The entire premise of the movie really is. This is Spirit Away now, by the so way. We just we just oh, totally yeah. changed over to Spirit Away. It's just about twenty years. I'm okay fine. with that because yeah, I, I, I have seen Spirit Yeah, we can we can um so Spirited Away is actually probably his. Most, uh, popular. Most, yeah. popular. most popular. Most popular. And was uh, the highest grossing movie in Japan for a long time. It just uh, got beat, actually. It won what? an Academy Award. Uh, it, it won it, some other anime, but yeah, it's Your the only. Name. It's the only. Uh, it's called Your Name. It, what, it was mm. the only anime feature Ooh, that, that was, was like really nominated good, for a actually. bunch of stuff outside of the foreign film and animated cat- category. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Spirited Away. Uh, that's that that that's the one that I vividly remember watching um, as a kid on Toonami because I saw that was like the one I saw the most amount of promos for. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember seeing you know the big like yeah the the witches. Um, wh- what were their names again? Yubaba and Zaniba. Yeah, Yubaba and Zaniba. Like I just remember being very very frightened of how they looked and mm-hmm. how they were like large. And sort of like disproportionate to everybody else. Yeah. Um, just seeing like the dragon soaring through the sky and everything, like I, bleeding, just ble- bleeding yeah. everywhere. Yeah. It's so yeah. Pretty. You know what? I was because I figured that Spirited Away would be more kid friendly. Ha. Same. <laughs> no. I thought <laughs> being like on the surface it is, but once you're old enough to understand, it just kind of hits you like well, a ton of bricks. When I was yeah, six and saw that in theaters, the scene where her parents turn into pigs that was, was pretty brutal. Horrifying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it makes I you feel was, like shit. Yeah, I was and, like genuinely yeah. scared. No, of that. like even even now, like the whole the whole you know the movie ends and things are supposed to be happy and like then you realize like the more it sits with you, like it's not like she was a whiny like piece of shit and then she lost her parents and then she learned how to like fend for herself and do all this stuff by herself and she made friends and like she made lasting like memories Mm -hmm. and she gets taken away and her parents are like acting the same way like they didn't change at all so and she doesn't have control in that situation Mm -hmm. she's control when it's her fighting for her survival but when it's her parents like she has none so is she gonna become like that whiny piece of shit again Again. or is she gonna you know be the character she we wanted her to be and Mm. the giant baby in that movie freaked me oh my god (laughs) but i don't want to think about that giant baby giant baby so slimy let's talk about no face for a second because no face yeah what a good character i don't know if you guys remember this but kamar went as no face a couple years ago Uh, i remember that yeah yeah that was like one of the first times i ever talked to kamar (laughs) he's great yeah shout out to kamar shout out to kamar hi big um, but it, no face. When I realized like the whole meaning behind that character, I was like blown away. No, like, go go into it for people who haven't, yeah, can you? you know, who haven't seen it, yeah, please or, or read it. <laughs> Corey. Also, not, I want to hear your take on it. So, like, I mean, I'm not gonna spoil it. Like, no, spoil my, it. What's the point of doing this podcast? If we're not gonna spoil it. All right, so, so I'm gonna go. It's into 2001. It. If you've not seen it now, it's it's yeah. your fault. You. You've had 16 so, years. So, no face is essentially he he represents uh, greed. And like gluttony, that's what I got from it. Because like he, when you first see him, like you know he's just like this this entity, and like you know he he like gives out gold and everything. But then you know the mouth appears for the first mm-hmm. time, and then like when we meet him again, like he's like this big sort of you know gelatinous blob that just takes in everything, and you know it it doesn't seem like it'll ever be satisfied. So that's what I got from it. I well, got that. Yeah, I mean, and there's more to it than that when you start reading into like the more adult interpretations of the film like the whole idea that the bathhouse is essentially selling young women like that's you know the historical context of it when Mm -hmm. you talk about you know Chihiro being brought in as a slave girl and forced to like clean the bathhouse and how it's an allegory for like becoming a child sex slave and you talk you talk about no face and no face is like the clientele like he wants everything in life like he has the money but the only thing he wants is this little girl Mm -hmm. and it just goes to show like that's what you know that's what the culture was like in in these areas right and so you talk about no face and there's like layers upon layers of what he is and it's so interesting that he yeah. becomes good in the end like yeah mm-hmm. he goes through all this like he's brainwashed but everyone's brainwashed uh-huh. and then you, you feel kind sorry of like, for him yeah you feel sorry for him by the end like this is a creep like he ate people he he was trying to get this little girl and then suddenly 
you know, he's just on the train being being tranquil. He winds up staying back and like spinning some yarn with an old lady on the on a <laughs> flooded train line. Yeah. I honestly think he's one of like the most interesting characters in pretty much any of the movies. I yeah. think he's just like there's so many different ways to interpret him and just different ways to go with it. I think it's like really impressive how they made him that way. Which was definitely on purpose, I think, too, being just literally no face. Like, mm-hmm. I think that's really clever how they did that. Also, yeah. the voice acting for that's incredible. Like, just mm-hmm. think about it. Like, this dude has no face. Right. And, no face. You know, sometimes all he does is moans, and you, the, you understand uh, him in a way. Uh, like, he goes like, ah, uh, when he's, like, giving yeah. out the goal. Yeah, so kind of reminds creepy. me of Gus Snell. Oh, my God. Why? I have no words. Sorry, I have no, <laughs> I have no clue what you guys are talking about, so I just figured I'd chime in and dig at Gus Snell a little bit. <laughs> Okay. Go on. I, I, I mean, shit. Now I was gonna say something, and now I'm shook. Um, but like, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say that like when I watched the movie for the second time, when I didn't hate it, I kind of interpreted No Face as like, like a rep- representation, yeah, a representation of Chihiro and how she's like this like greedy little child and like, mm-hmm. and she. It, it almost seems like she's learning to take care of herself by taking care of this other character Mm -hmm. and like that's what i first got from it and then i learned like those kind of uh interpretations with the whole uh representation of the culture and everything and i just thought it was interesting because i was like whoa i didn't even think about that i thought it was just like like i'm learning to take care of myself by taking care of this other person and that's kind of how her character developed Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean there's also something to go when it's like or something to say when you think about how Mizaki writes all these as he goes along, like yeah. they kind of storyboard mm-hmm. as they go, and you know you don't know where it's going, so we can have six or seven different interpretations. Mm-hmm. I mean, I you look like- at you look at things like Prince Mononoke, and there's there's no villain. There's mm-hmm. people who do bad shit, but then they do good shit. Like mm-hmm. you can have a villain become a hero when you just kind of go with the emotion of the story rather than the actual another story. Common, mm-hmm. Another common theme of his films, like. The, many, like there's many instances in a lot of the films where like the villain becomes the hero. Yes, yeah. Yeah. or a hero, or mm-hmm. like heroic at least. Can mm-hmm. we talk about how many of the films start out with the absence of the parents, and then like usually it's the girl that like has to like kind of grow up really fast? I don't know. Yeah, like I mean, talking about all this, like I didn't really think about like all of the movies really start that way. Yeah, mm-hmm. and like like dang what. <laughs> I don't know. I never thought about that. That's I guess it's kind of... It, it's a representation of how life is like in Japan sometimes. I mean, I could be wrong, but, like, it seems like... Like, yeah, like, once the parents are out of the picture, it seems like the woman has to be the one to, like, take charge and kind of, like, hold down the fort. Because, like, I noticed that not even in just Ghibli films, just, like, in Japanese media in general, just, like... Yeah, there's a woman that has to be like the stable character that, that kind of just like, That's like either awesome. the, the matronly thing or whatever. Well, it's actually but. an issue because since the 1940s and since the war and the way that the Japanese reacted to the end of the war, it's really broken down the power structures that were set in with their in their culture. Yeah. And uh, so since then, there's been a lack of a father figure, or not even a father oh, figure, wow. but a father role model, like a, yeah. a set piece where the father is supposed to be. And it's ca- caused all these men to, uh, like the otaku lifestyle, of fleeing to their bedrooms to date online instead of going out and being active and oh, wow. having to face the uh, rejection that is the world. They just seclude themselves in games and online places where they can like find a girl and they don't have to try. They can just live by themselves. Wow. And so Japanese uh, Japanese culture right now is going through a uh, baby, like, Deficit, yeah. Oh, where their wow. their uh, population rate is dropping at a well, like crazy I have no bad idea. rate. I, yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's, interesting. it's really interesting to too. Like it. just looking at like history of like that part of the world. That part of the world was isolated for the longest time out of anything. Mm-hmm. And then you know I don't know if it's exactly tied, but until the 1800s, you know, imperialism was happening over here in the 1400s, and it didn't affect that area of the world like eastern asia until the 1800s so mm-hmm. japan was yeah. kind of like an island off to itself and you know even after china and korea were being affected and westernized like japan was still going strong like no nah, this isn't for us mm-hmm. and then you know they get out of isolationism and then are thrust into a world war after world war and conflict after conflict and now they're like all right well we're gonna make shit and it's gonna be awesome and everyone's <laughs> gonna buy it and we're gonna make a lot of money but like what social aspects are we still gonna keep from our old lifestyle versus the new lifestyle and like what are we gonna 
do. And they're a massive, like, almost, like, I mean, I think most people would consider them a first world country, where only in, like, 1940, in the 1940s, did they stop believing that their emperor was a god. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. The first time, when their emperor went on the radio to say that Japan was surrendering, people didn't believe that it was the emperor because they'd never heard him speak and they were confused by it. And it was the first time that the Japanese were, like, openly surrendering like that, and it just devastated the culture. Oh, wow. It was a, yeah, I, a huge I feel impact. like I need to read more into this culture. There were some people who stayed in the jungles of where Japan occupied for 30-plus years because they didn't believe that Japan would surrender. Mm-hmm. And they would attack, like, the villagers in the places that they were hiding out in mm-hmm. until, like, people would just be like, hey, like, for real, though, dude, like, chill out. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> And then, like, they finally come out and realize that they wasted the last, like, 30 years of their life, and they're like, oh. Damn. Okay. That's it's a just bummer. The f- then they go into the workforce, that. and they realize it's not for them, and they become otakus and live in their bedrooms, <laughs> body just, pillows and all. It's they funny. Just it's just okay. like, <laughs> It's like this weird theme of, like, I'm gonna be in this little huddle by myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's strange how that works. Well, it's like breaking down, like villages and globalization on a rapid scale like mm-hmm. okay not only are you by yourself like in this village but now you're in the whole world not your whole country the whole world yeah so uh speaking of like war and unrest i feel like we should get into you know the more adult film uh princess mononoke i think we were talking about adult film a little bit earlier especially okay, you so know, princess mononoke right princess <laughs> mononoke <laughs> Um, Tentacles. <laughs> Princess Mononoke. Uh, when uh, the first time I saw that, that now that film had me shook. That's because, a life changer, right? Yeah, because I mean, like you know, you watch you watch Spirited Away, you watch you know even films like Nausicaa, and you're like, okay, so this is the vibe is like you know, um, like sort of whimsical. I mean, there are some serious stuff that happens. I feel but like, like Nausicaa is pretty serious overall. It is. I it kind is. of correlate. Nausicaa, Castle in the Sky, and Mononoke all together as like the well, more serious. Well, if you look at them, and that uh, those three, and uh, what's the other one? House of Me Castle. It almost that seems too, like they yeah. exist in the same timeline. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's like definitely. they're their own separate entity. Whereas they all seem very. Correlated. All the other ones are like, oh, kind of a normal world with a little bit of magic. Those ones are like, no, like in the ancient forests in Princess Mononoke. You know, mm-hmm. long after the ancient gods are dead and gone in in Nausicaa, and then mm-hmm. in between, it's like, all right, the rise of magic in, uh, you know, it almost seems like uh, House of Me Castle is a precursor to Castle in the Sky. I know they're based on two mm-hmm. different source materials, and like, mm-hmm. it's almost you like can a definitely. Similar- Piece them all together. <laughs> yeah. What was that, Gus? I said it's almost like a cinematic universe. Almost. The Maya is like a cinematic mm-hmm. universe. And then Ponyo's in there somewhere, and you're not exactly sure where it fits. But, like, you just mm-hmm. accept it. Could be in there with Kiki's. I don't know. Yeah. So, I could say Ponyo and Kiki. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Um, uh, so, Mononoke. Uh, I remember reading about that film. Um, and that film was essentially, you know... Miyazaki voicing his frustrations with the the conditions of the world at the time like he was angry at the world uh he was angry at you know war unrest um just environmental issues as well like the fact that there are people that would you know tear down entire forests for their own personal gain and the interesting about the interesting thing about that film is that you know certain films in Miyazaki's canon they feel like they can go on forever almost this one feels like there's it it feels like there's a ticking time bomb on this one there's like a sense of urgency throughout the film like there's not a single frame that feels wasted everything matters because like it it feels like something's coming or it's like something needs to be like solved before it's too late like it's a it's a sense of like uneasiness and urgency when you watch that film also when i was a kid and it was in the beginning of the film and i saw ashitaka mm. get his bow out he was oh. aiming at the dude and the dude's arms came clean oh, yeah. off yes that yeah. had me i was shook it I, like, I was, <laughs> shook it as fuck it i had the same cool experience by ellie brown thanks <laughs> shout out to ellie brown i actually love seeing stuff like that sounds so bad but i love seeing stuff like that because it's, so it's so you true arms get shot off no because it's so true to true? like it, I mean, it's true to like what they did back then because they were fucking ruthless. They just Not, like I don't know about necessarily in that area. That was more of like a Native American yeah. style, where like they would have blunt force arrows that were meant to yeah, dismember yeah. rather than pierce. I'm pretty sure Japanese arrows were like always sharp as fuck and meant for stabbing. Yeah, but I'm yeah. just like 
the whole chopping people thing. I'm just like that was yeah. due to his his demon arm, right? Well, like, yeah, yeah, I mean the strength they, behind they the hate. demon arm. Mm-hmm. But it's also interesting because like I love when movies and things like do something that can only be done in that medium. Like, mm-hmm. if you watch that happen in, you know, a live-action film, you wouldn't believe it. Like, dude, that guy's arms wouldn't come off of yeah, that, but you watch yeah. it in an anime, and you're like, oh, shit, totally that looks it. real. That looks like it could actually happen. Oh, yeah, yeah, and you feel it in his arm. Like, especially in the moment when he pushes yeah, yeah. open the door to the village, and you see his arm, like, just tense, yeah. and, like, oh, it bends, oh, yeah. and to yeah. just, like, push it open, you're just like, he can do it. It's real. I yeah, like, he's really bunker. lifting this, you know, this door that takes ten men to lift. It's crazy. Uh, but Nam do more on what you said about like the sense of urgency. I mean, they set that in pretty early with pretty much every plot line and like um, side story that's going on in the movie. You know, like mm-hmm. ever since he touches that monster and he gets that, yeah. Like as soon as that happens, there's already like a taking time bomb on it, and mm-hmm. then um, the oh my god, what is it called? The thing. The, the forest thing. The, the forest, forest spirit? Yeah, the yeah. forest spirit. When There's ticking yeah. time bomb on that. Like, literally everything. It's, I don't know. Yeah. Um, also, yeah, uh, going back to what you said about, like, you feeling like it's a very physical film. Like, every time, like, we see him have a spasm, like, you just feel it in your arm. Like, it's mm-hmm. like, I love how they animated that and they convey that. Like, yeah, it's, it's so visceral. It's really visceral, yeah. I'm such a fan of good animation and that was good animation that was good I animation. wish that I could animate like I wish that it I could do so this it is so fucking difficult like it I is. dropped out of the animation shout track. out to <laughs> animation majors out there shout out to Kamar shout, oh, out, yeah. to Kamar. shout out to Kamar during uh, finals last semester because that man was in the labs for like oh yeah like 72 hours straight or mm-hmm. something yeah. didn't he do that Zootopia was insane was it Kamar didn't Kamar, yeah, Kamar yeah, direct he himself. animated Zootopia yeah, oh, yeah. that was man, all man good yep. for him tough guy won an Oscar yeah good job he went right to Disney. R.I.P. <laughs> Once again, did not die. <laughs> oh my god. Oh god. Oh, random thing that like popped into my head. I saw this on uh, Tumblr like ages ago. Mm-hmm. But it's a really cool thing. I don't know if any of you guys have seen it, but Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah. yeah. There, well, well, um, I have all 27 volumes on my shelf at home. Get at me. Okay. Damn. You're okay. We get it. Yeah. Tell, tell me again you're not a weeb. But anyways, Gosh, it was this really cool <laughs> thing where like <laughs> they showed uh, Edward Ulrich's... Is that his last name? El- Elric. Elric, sorry. Um, like they showed like a shot of him from like the very beginning of the series and then a shot of him from the very end of the series and they basically explained how the animators basically made him grow and develop through their animation mm-hmm. and like kind of like because it wasn't like an immediate change you know how like some like go through like age gaps mm-hmm. in certain shows like they like gradually made him grow up through the drawing and I thought that Let's was go. such a cool thing to do like I, I wouldn't even know how to do that without like fucking it up that's well, dope that's the cool thing about uh, Full Metal Alchemist though is cause that's actually there were two animes there was Full Metal Alchemist and Full yep, Metal Alchemist and Brotherhood. Brotherhood but like you know most of these uh, manga when they come out they kind of don't have an ending in mind or they have an ending but they don't know how they'll get there how long they'll last like uh, mm-hmm. shout out to like people who you know the guys who did Death Note knew exactly what they wanted when they went into it. Like Akira Himakawa, the the woman who made uh, Full Metal Alchemist, she knew what she wanted out of that. She knew exactly like what she needed, and you know, 27 volumes is done. Like this is how many chapters I need. So she gave them all these people the outline. So they did Brotherhood. They were used to animating these characters, but by the time it got to got you know got time to make uh, Brotherhood, which is based off of the actual manga. Um, they kind of like knew what they wanted and Mm -hmm. you know they had all of this work to go off of uh and so being able to do that is really powerful but like all of the stuff that she did the the mangaka did to set the foundation for it was incredible like that's one of the best series i've ever read same i think i live by full metal alchemist (laughs) um actually shout out shout out to my brother uh chimo dazu my little brother, if you're listening, um, he actually has the entire series on Blu-ray. Oh, yeah, uh, Brotherhood. Good. So, Good. yeah, I brother has the brother. Shout out to yeah. Nambi's brother if you're listening. I'm sorry for saying fuck so often. He and talks about like a sailor. All right, never mind. <laughs> You good? <laughs> so apologize for the hentai stuff. I no, feel never. Like apologize the least of your worries. You should no. never have Shout to apologize Shout out to Javon for Weems kinks. for making me Stop know that I wasn't alone <laughs> in accidentally watching the Teen Titans hentai. Oh god. Ellie, you need to stop kink shaming Seth right now. <laughs> kink shaming. We all have we all have our things. 
Yeah, I'm sorry for shaming your Like a trophy case. I'm not. It's okay. I'm not sorry for it. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Anyways, um, so, uh, Princess Mononoke, uh, the Mononoke princess, a Mononoke princess. I'm sorry. Hey, you guys oh. want to hear a funny joke that I made earlier today when none oh of you guys God. were here? Let him have the, this. He has nothing else to talk about. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. They they were asking like who Princess Mononoke is like arch nemesis or whatever it is, and I was like Princess Stereo Noke. Get it? <laughs> Can you? Just, Get that was, it? No, that was really good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Johnson, you're the worst. You're <laughs> I'm waiting to die. Person in this room. I am into that joke. Okay, Can we talk about House Moving Castle? Oh my god, sorry. Please. All right, real quick before we move on to House Moving Castle, I remember, guys, now you brought up uh, uh, something about the villain. Well, not the villain, but like the antagonist of of that. Iboshi. Yeah, Iboshi. Iboshi. Um, Is Iboshi the, the villain? Well, she's she feels that. They, or is it Jigo? It could be both, but she feels like you're is like. Is it Ashitaka? She's Mononoke's. She's not the villain. She's Mononoke's. If, if she's uh, not the villain, then she's the foil because there's she's doing things that are against what they're trying to do. Okay, yeah, she's mm-hmm. also trying to find the spirit of the forest, as by Jigo's uh, impression, and she's also uh, taking care of all the cripples and the women of Iron Town. She's a badass lady. She just happens to be doing what's best for her town. Right. That's why she's such a good antagonist. Because she's doing exactly what she needs to do to keep her people alive. Yep. Fuck you guys, she's not the antagonist. No one's the antagonist. Damn. I don't want to do exactly what they need to do to keep themselves alive. Because Why the movie is from Ashitaka's like point of view, Ashitaka doesn't have an antagonist or like a like an opposite in that movie. Ashitaka's but, opposite is anger. He's just there to find well, out yeah, why no everyone's physical, so angry no all the person. time. So I feel like it's the it's demon that fights him in the beginning. That's it. That's his battle. That's his story. <laughs> it's not Ashitaka's story. He's I think so Seth is the antagonist of this movie because he's being very antagonistic right now. <laughs> Can we no, just talk just about Seth down. for a second? Ashitaka is as much the hero of uh, Princess Mononoke as, uh, as Seth, fucking Nick Carraway your is of The Great Gatsby. He's just there. You he's just the mean, eyes and ears. He is your. He is the way that you perceive this story, but he's not even a part of it. You guys, can we talk about Seth for a second? What does this dude do? I don't know. He oh, hates talking into his microphone. <laughs> you told me to be. I was like this. I was fucking touching the <laughs> microphone with my lips, <laughs> and you're telling me that I don't hey, need to do hey, this. Hey, so hey, I hey. moved back. That is a hundred dollar microphone. Don't be LKT. Disgusting. Hey, I'm not LKT. I pay my dues. I want to lick this microphone all I fucking want. <laughs> I didn't say that you could just talk to the side, Seth. I don't know how microphones You still work. have to talk into the microphone. I'm not an audio person. Clearly. I don't do these things. Anyways. Anyway, so uh, I guess we can move into Howl's Moving Castle. Can you hear me licking this microphone right now? All right, Ellie, what, yes. what are your thoughts on Howl's Moving Castle? Yeah, what are your thoughts? I like it a lot. All right, tell us no, something. Because um, I haven't <laughs> seen Howl's Moving Castle. Me neither. You haven't? I haven't. This mic That's does not one of the, good. Yeah. We're going to hang out on Wednesday and watch it. Um, okay. Uh, I didn't have thoughts? a topic in mind. I just like I mean, just, just to like talk thoughts, about like it. yeah, like reactions, like what you What's your when favorite you saw the character film? and why. Calcifer is my favorite character because he's a little cutie. Oh, shut up my Calcifer tattoo. Um, I think that we were talking about witches earlier, and we were talking about um Yubaba and how they were just like really fat and ugly looking, and then yeah. thought about the witch in this one, and I was like, huh. I don't know. That was just like a very minor thought, but describe the witch. Fat. Man. Also warts. Like, <laughs> um, how about like, hashtag thick? How about hashtag like witches. what was <laughs> I'm body shaming? What was her character and like what like like describe like her purpose in that film? Wait, which which film are we talking about right now? House, House, House of Castle. Castle. Yeah. Like her purpose in the whole thing? Just like in general, like because I haven't seen the movie, so I'm like, you say the witch, and I'm like, oh, oh okay. Well, I mean, can I spoil it? Can I just yes. Yeah, once again, okay. Th- if you haven't seen it by now, don't watch this podcast. Don't listen to this podcast. Don't Spoilers. watch this podcast. Um, okay, so basically this friend. movie's about It's Sophie, right? Yeah Okay, so Sophie is this girl who works With her family in a hat shop And um, she is obviously Also vaguely in European somewhere Yeah, vaguely like in Kiki's Europe service. somewhere um, And she Is just at the hat shop Alone one night, right? She's locking up And um, this witch comes in because I'm jumping around here But Sophie ran into Howl, which is this, like, really handsome wizard. Um, He is handsome. Does does, does he have, like, a moving castle or something? (laughs) No, actually, no, not at first. You're introduced to him not with a moving castle. It's there. It's weird. Interdimensional castle also moves, but also doesn't move. Mm -hmm. How's angsty AF? Then it flies. He was my first childhood crush. Then it becomes a castle in the sky. No, but, um, so she runs into him, but this witch... Uh, who is in love with him ends up kind of coming after her and she 
turn Sophie into an old woman herself. And um, then the movie kind of starts off from there because Sophie has to run away from home and her parents because she was transformed into this old woman and she can't really, like, confront her family like that. Um, and then she kind of just ends up with Howell and... Yeah. In the moving castle? In the moving, the moving castle, castle, yes, actually. Cute. She yeah. kind of just, like... So, wait, there is a moving stuff. castle involved. No, yes, there is a moving castle. A little like, bit. But it's an interdimensional moving, but yet not moving. Yeah, so wait, yeah it, has, how, it has a door that opens to five different places, and mm. the place that she finds is a shop front, and she goes in, and then the door switches, and then you find out it's a moving castle. But it also opens to, like, an other dimension that Howl turns into a bird thing in. It also opens into the castle. It opens into the storefront, and then like two other places. I forget where they are right now. But it's not introduced as a moving castle. It just introduces a shop, and then it becomes a moving castle. It also has legs. It also has legs. That's what I was gonna is. ask how uh, it moves. It has legs. Yeah, it it's is. like steam powered. It's powered, legs. it's powered by Calcifer. Mm -hmm. He powers it and generates all like the uh, I guess energy force that goes into it that yeah. uh, just makes it travel and makes yeah, it. Calcifer is it literally just like a living fire. He's cute. He makes. He likes bacon. Aww. He likes bacon. He likes so bacon. Cute. Gabe is but a also, like, it, on. he is Howl's heart, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's. I don't know. I think it's really symbolic and nice. He's really. Although young. the Witch of the Waste took his heart. Yeah, it's weird because like Howl Same. has all these different pieces. Because it's there's also like the dancing star people who are yeah. like in a way a part of him. There's also the bird part of him. Like Howl is shouldn't be a thing. He's just like mm -hmm. magic that's being held together by who the hell knows what. Rest in peace, bird person. Rest in peace, bird person. Rest in, Rest in peace, peace, bird, bird, bird person. person. When when season three coming out? Dude, I don't know. Oh my god, no, it's Harman, supposed to be listening. like especially long though. Yeah, but like Dan Harmon, if you're listening, please, please. Yeah, we we need it. We need season three. Although he's been getting angry at people for asking. Yeah, but like I need, well, more, okay. I need more Rick and Morty in my life. So yeah, true. He kind of deserves it at this point. Like, it was supposed to. I heard it was supposed to come out in like January. It was. He said, so, he said let year, this man live his fucking life because because he promised us more. Yeah. And like this is his job. Like <laughs> <laughs> this is, you're not doing your job. His job although, is not to please you. Although if you want, you can check him out on Harmon Quest. It's him playing D and D with his friends. It's pretty fun. Is that a friend? Oh, yeah, YouTube that's series. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Watch that, Ellie. We you know Corey. Uh, okay, okay. That's, that's fine. <laughs> so, um, I guess the last film, unless anybody wants to dive into, uh, <laughs> Wait, uh, we got that? ten minutes left. What? Uh, I do this to be discreet about it and not have to say. Corey, why are you holding up that ten minutes? Sorry, All right, man. <laughs> because as of right now, there are ten minutes left in the episode. Well, because of what? What's the restraint? Uh, the restraint is I want to drink wine with Masha tonight. Okay, <laughs> that's oh, the restraint, oh my man. God. St. Patty's Day. Okay. All right, let's talk. Um, so she's not even Irish. Wait, you're Irish. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Wait, wait, Ellie. What are you? Aren't you? Aren't yeah. You're Irish? <laughs> yeah, you're Irish. I'm a mutt. No one really knows. <laughs> Irish pride. Okay. There's somewhere, some Irish in my family somewhere. So, uh, obviously there are- some Irish in you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, oh. Um, Wait, up. is Anne Irish? Because she commented that she was born Irish earlier. <laughs> Look at you know once. <laughs> what? Isn't Anne from, like, Vietnam? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's Asian. <laughs> So is Miyazaki. We got ten minutes left. We got Sorry. ten minutes. It's probably like five. We got this eight point. minutes uh, left. So uh, obviously there are some works outside of Miyazaki and um, Takahata. Yeah, Isao Takahata. Yeah. All right. So yeah, there are some works outside. So has anybody seen any of those works? You mentioned something about Grave with the Grave with the Fireflies. Fireflies. That's Isao Takahata. That's the co-founder. It, it is yeah. the most. What is it? It's one of the most heart-wrenching movies you'll ever watch. It's yeah. False. No. It's it is it. So when it came out, uh, they made this movie and they screened it for people. And then when they asked people, they're like, "All right, well, like, how'd you feel?" And they're like, "It was good, but I feel like I want to kill myself." Ooh, um, yes. And that happened way too often. Nice. And Japan's like suicide rate rate is already way too high. Yeah. So they, they have actually a sweet for us. Yeah, like they actually held off releasing that movie until they were done with My Neighbor Totoro. And the way they screened that movie was in a double feature. So like you're gonna get depressed, and then we're gonna give you My Neighbor Totoro afterwards to kind of like get you out of that depression. Wait, did they actually have that like suicide that forest me. on a real? Yeah, it's, well, yes, they do. It it's, a, it's a, like I think it's somewhere around the base of Mount Fuji. It's around that place. You just go. Mountain. You just go in there and you kill yourself. And then like there's bodies all over the place. 
but really? it, it follows. Yes, really. It follows the look, story. You can look, of a, look it up on uh, YouTube. Just no. IMDb. That made her for us. made a terrible. We do like Japanese Yeah, don't watch it. It's not great. Natalie Dormer. Not. I love Natalie Dormer. That's you know not not enough of her to watch that movie. I was just seeing like I was just looking at her prettiness the whole time. She's really pretty. She's really pretty. Really. Game of the Fireflies follows the story of a brother and sister as they survive together through. Of World War Two. Oh God! And not just like that sounds just so. It's not like one of the big cities that like gets obliterated. It's it's one it's of the one smaller of the towns that gets firebombed. So mm. not everyone's dead. Like there's a lot of people still alive in the town, and, and it's like these two kids whose parents are either dead or gone. They don't know. Like they try finding like a hospital, and it just gets worse and worse and more depressing. It's a beautiful movie. It's a recommended it. watch. Like I own it. Yeah, it, it. it's yeah. probably online somewhere too. I think I rented it on like yeah, Amazon or something. Okay. But it's a brutal movie, and it's one that I've only seen once. It's it's like the sh- it's like Schindler's List. Like I watched it, I liked yeah. it, but I don't feel the need to watch it again. Yeah. You know, you don't want to put yourself through. I that. don't need to put myself through that again. Yeah. Ooh, quick plug. Um, so like, for all the people that are like into animating and stuff, uh, this happened like recently, like a co- maybe a few years ago. Um, but there's this uh, program called Open Tunes where uh, I think Miyazaki used the same program to animate. So if you're interested in using that, it's open source, and I think it's free. So yeah, it's like, free now. They, they yeah. publish a version of it that yeah. anyone can get access to. Mm-hmm. Also, Miyazaki's most recent movie, The Wind Rises, is probably one of my top five Ghibli movies ever. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Top-notch. Like, seriously surprised me in so many ways. Can it's we talk great. about the one he's coming out of retirement for? Something about a cat. You can do that. Yeah, it's it's, about it's, a it's a cho- it's a children's movie about a caterpillar. I you know, there's not a whole lot of details about it, but this is also what the third time Miyazaki's come out of come retirement. Come out of retirement. <laughs> yeah, he retired after Mononoke. Well, he retired. Wait, really? Yeah, he yeah. retired the last time because he was fed up with their taku culture. Just bringing it back to that, he was mm-hmm. like, "Hey, people keep sexualizing these characters. Like, there's no need. This is disgusting, and mm-hmm. I'm not going to make movies for that sort of fan base." So now he's making a movie about a non-human character. He's like, G- go ahead, fuckers. You know, I dare, you, I dare you to sexualize this caterpillar. It's Watch them. Come- Watch them, Seth. <laughs> <laughs> Rule 34. If it, it's supposed to come out in 2019, I believe. Okay. So 2019. Woo woo. Next me is up. Is it going to be like feature length though? Or is yeah. it gonna, okay. Well, there's also this new movie that's coming out. It's uh, Studio Ghibli. It's not Miyazaki. It's actually the first collaboration. I believe it's a French uh, director. It's called The Red Turtle. Wait, wait. It's, uh, it was up for an Oscar. <laughs> it's a silent <laughs> film, actually. Uh, it seems really interesting, but I haven't been able to catch it in the States. It was at the Charles for a bit, but I just missed it. Also, Slip. hi, Miyazaki is 76. Let's hope he pulls through. He's an old man. If he dies, no one will be that surprised. Hey, Japan's got a life? high yeah. life expectancy rate. Right? Sure, a lot oh, of fish, yeah. a lot of rice, and sake. I want some and rice just, like, right now. And just like general better fitness and like. Mm-hmm. And yeah, less they also have otaku them. culture, which is like less good. And higher buildings to jump off of. That's true. Yeah, yeah like the University also of Tokyo forests. or University yeah. of Japan. Is that yeah. the one that people mm-hmm. don't get into? Do Japanese twenty-year-olds always want to die? Yeah, yeah, even more so. Actually, the the that's the highest. Uh, collection of people who kill themselves because there's one big university uh, i think it's the university of japan or the university of tokyo or something and basically if you don't get in there uh there's so much pressure for you to go to this college that a lot of times people will apply there and not get in and just be like well fuck it my life has been building towards this i didn't get in i'm gonna kill myself check your That's entitlement <laughs> <laughs> i became a film student not because <laughs> i uh <laughs> i was uh pressured to gain a lot of wealth and happiness in life same good because you're not going to find it this good <laughs> okay so now that we're running out of time um real quick just uh we're just going to go around the the circle starting with me what's the one film out of the ghibli canon that impacted you the most what would you say is the greatest in your opinion I'll those are start. two different questions okay so I'll, let's just go with greatest like what do you think is the oh, greatest all right, okay. oh, I guess. all right all right, uh, I'll just, uh, I'll probably say, I'm gonna have to go with Mononoke. I will also have to go with Mononoke. Uh, I'll also have to go with Mononoke. Damn it, that was I'll the one I was go, gonna say. I guess by default with the only one that I've ever seen, but I'll, I will change the question because this was a loaded question, Nambi. <laughs> Jesus. I wanna watch Grave of the Fireflies because I you like being sad. Yeah, I was gonna say that. I was gonna say that in a different way, but I'm glad that you summarized it, Seth. You fucking dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I hear that that's the one that's gonna fuck me up. Oh, it is. Well, it's guaranteed. Sweet. It's gonna fuck you. 
Um, Castle in the Sky, I think, actually. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. yeah, that's a good choice. Are we actually the first Ghibli film? Are we doing the ones that we like the most or the ones we, we're trying to see? Yes. Like the most. Like oh, most. I like the Princess the Mononoke. Okay. What? The greatest of all time. I learned cool. what that meant the other day. Just the, the other Oh, oh you're yeah. so cute. You just <laughs> <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> I want to see Nausicaa, though. I, Nausicaa is amazing. Oh, Nausicaa is really Nausicaa good. Is that's, so good. That's like a very good I was supposed movie. to see it today. Yeah. Like, It's hard to pick a favorite. It's like... They're all so good. Like, and there's they not all a like bad movie. Okay, besides Tales of Mercy, Tales of Mercy sucked that ass. Bad. Tales of Mercy was terrible. Oh, Read the book. The book is really amazing. Not the movie's terrible. Bad. Gore Miyazaki tried. He get, got better with Up on Poppy Hill. Get but this like, fucking on. guy. The only reason that movie Out was made here. is because he was Hayao Miyazaki's son. That's it. <laughs> oh my god. Fuck Damn. that movie. So, me. <laughs> Seth, Gabe, and Ellie, are, is there anything that you would like to plug? Anything you want to plug? Social media? Anything coming up? Uh. You don't have to plug social media if you. I saw the look, Ellie. I saw the look of the corner. Damn, bar. call her uh, out. Ellie's personal phone number. No, 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 no. Don't put her government out there like that. Shout out to already, just already a drone, drone hey, out there like, looking for her. You know what? You're absolutely right. Okay, so since they're not plugging anything, I'm gonna plug um, a few I things. I can still plug. Go ahead. Go. Ahead. Go. Um, my Instagram <laughs> is um, Ellie is really cool. But like oh, really with R L Y because there is a character. Like it that. used to be Millennium Falcon, and that yeah, was the dopest yeah, stuff. You know, you know, you know, it was too confusing for me. I'm sorry. I, a lot of people didn't get it. Because it my wasn't heart, Millennium. Always, it was close. No, just some people just don't watch Star Wars. Can you believe that? I that's can. ridiculous. I know. You know, in retrospect, like that's a good way to just weed out people I don't need in my life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But. <laughs> yeah. We uh, about. Do you have anything we- to plug? <laughs> Y'all two have anything to plug? I'm gonna go plug Seth later, but that's about it. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> I, was <gonna laughs> jo- uh, I was gonna make the same joke about Gabe, damn it! Gosnell, do you have anything oh. to plug LKT wise that's coming up? Give me a second. Oh okay. shit, well, well uh, Gosnell's taking his good sweet time. Uh, Gabe As forgot always. to plug that he's uh, directing a film too this semester. I am directing a film too. I'm not semester. even in the class, I'm shooting his film too because I don't even know what happened, but only three people wanted to shoot them, so I'm just there and because I would not settle for just mediocrity also check out uh, check out Lambda Capital's YouTube page uh, we are doing the 52 challenge oh shit whoa, 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 yes whoa, whoa, whoa. I guess I should guess who's directing tomorrow that's God yeah, that's guess God. shooting yeah. tomorrow it's gonna be so fun one. is it Gabe? oh it's Gabe. shit yeah yes, uh, check out that LKT 52 week challenge it's pretty dope new stuff every week we're yep. kind of on a backlog right now because uh, I'm a piece of shit and I haven't collected everyone's 50, uh, 48 films there's a lot of stuff there's like six that have been finished that just haven't been uploaded oh, yeah. four that have been I don't know four it's a lot currently there. it's dope but there's new stuff all the time. Oh, wait, wait. Can I plug one more thing? Yeah, go ahead. It's like no. an actual thing to... No, you're not allowed. <laughs> Hurry. Plug, plug so, it, little. So, um, Wham Fest yes. is coming up. It's yes. on uh, Towson's campus, and um, it's women and minorities in media and film. Yep. And my friend Helene and I... Uh, Shout out to Helene. Shout out, Shout to, out Helene. to Helene. Shout out to Helene She was my director of photography for a film that I just directed, and we're going to submit it. So, that's cool. When oh. is Yay. Wham Fest? Do you know? No. I just know it's soon. Fest is April 22nd, I believe. Sure. The weekend. Knowledge. I'm taking pictures for it one day. I just don't. It's sometime in April. We'll get back to you on that. Yeah, uh, uh, we'll actually have a special support, episode support. leading up to that. So, I got um, a, I got a thing. Hold on. Uh, so LKT is having the Pie Me event where you get to pie members in the face from. I think it's a dollar. I'm, I'm glad we changed from the cum pie me event. Yeah, that was terrible. too many jokes. Yeah. What do you, yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? Weekend? That's like the, that's like how you draw people in. No, it's not. Anyways, I've always <laughs> wanted to cum pie Corey Johnson. Cum pie me. The cum event pie is me, cum pie Corey. Cum pie Goss. I would love to cum pie Goss. Okay, they people were actually <laughs> this is too much sexual. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, people were last offended. year. So we changed to cream pie. Last year was on my birthday, so like everybody was pieing me like crazy. Everyone just wanted a cream pie Goss for his birthday. We we tried to petition Jordan to let Cream Productions like. Sponsor it. <laughs> when uh, when is that? It is uh, tentative, tentatively April twelfth, which is a Wednesday, and it's gonna be all day. I think from like like twelve to five. What Eight. kind of pies? Cream, cream pies. Cream. It's like whipped cream in a in a pie dish. So yeah. what? Cream so pies. all the money that's raised for it goes to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. I yep. was hoping that I would actually get some pie at the end. You like won't. Some real pie. You're Ooh. not going to. There Shout is no pie. Griffin Delisle for That's making some waste. of the best pies I've ever tasted. Ooh, also another Fucking plug uh, for LKT slash everyone on campus ever. Uh, Relay for Life is happening yes, in April. Is. That's the. It's the 21st to 22nd. I think 3 to 3 p.m. Uh, 
everything that is raised during that event goes to the American Cancer Society. Is that is that the right? I believe thing? so. That's yeah, American Cancer donate. Society. Uh, so we'll have a page up for that, um, and you can donate money to that, and uh, all the members will be advertising it throughout. Yeah. The also, next if you want to donate uh, to some other people to support uh, finding a cure for cancer, to, uh, look up the Red Cross because American Cancer Society is an option. Uh, they kind of suck though. Their organization is terrible, but like, well. I'd rather have money go towards the right places. But American Cancer Society is like not. They put more into their advertising. They also turn down uh, donations from religious groups for religions that are non-Christian, which really pisses me off. But the Red Cross is constantly pumping money into the right places. You can also do blood drives. There's plenty of stuff you can do. Other than that, I'm not saying don't go to Relay, but I'm just saying, you know, do your research. Find some stuff that you believe in yeah, and donate woke. some money. But still stay donate, woke. though, yeah. <laughs> stay woke. Yeah. Don't sleep. Stay woke. Stay woke. Everything's made up. Don't sleep. Everything's made up. Stay woke. And that is and all of the time that we have today. Gabe, closing statement. Dude, fuck Trump 2017. Hell yeah. Yo, fuck Yay, Trump. Yay, fuck Trump. Fuck Trump.